part of finding those opportunities has to do with benchmarking the contract. What are you comparing it to? How do you know what needs to change? So I've put together here a couple of perspectives so that you're not seeing it just through your eyes or a historical reference, but against different references. And we'll go through these different examples. First, benchmark that contract against its original projections. Chances are, no matter who negotiated it, you or, or others, maybe members of your staff, that contract was, was uh, uh, modeled as, as having a certain worth, a certain revenue value to your organization. Each change of the rate last time was projected to yield a certain reimbursement. The question is, did it actually yield that? If, if it didn't, why didn't it? What surprises you in here? Does it have to do with formulas and how the rates are calculated? Perhaps you can't achieve the rates if, the, if you have a lesser of language with charges and rates. You're getting paid your charges, but the rates in the contract are irrelevant. Perhaps there's claims adjudication logic that wasn't accounted for last time, and we're, you're all very proud of whatever percent increase it was, but it's not netting that in revenue. This is the time to get that baseline established very soundly. The second is to mine that claims data and look very closely at particular services, not just the ones that are high value now, but the ones that you project to be high value next. I'm going to have Greg review a few more details with some specifics on the modeling. Greg? Uh, Greg, this is Enrique. I think your phone might be muted. Thank you, Enrique. It was. Um, so, um, as Susan noted, uh, providers uh, must do their homework, which includes modeling um, the actual contract terms, uh, really modeling all plans, all product lines, and understanding the results in a side-by-side -side fashion. And uh, the Excel view that you see on screen, this is an example um, that um, organizations should look to incorporate where you're taking into account uh, the various plans, uh, breaking out uh, your modeling result uh, for both inpatient and outpatient. Um, often those should be done separately. Really looking at first um, determining what data set do you want to model. And in that data set, that could be um, your historical uh, service activity with the payer that you're looking to negotiate. That could be subsets of breaking out the plan uh, component with that particular payer. Um, or it could be incorporating a broader um, set of records uh, or accounts that resemble that particular payer population especially when you're modeling smaller payers, you may want to go with a larger data set that would be a representative sample um, for that particular population, uh, just so that you get a, an adequate service history in your modeling efforts. When you're doing your modeling, we typically find it important to break out and then analyze the data uh, from that service history into the actual reimbursement terms. Uh, so. Uh, this particular example on screen is an outpatient example uh, where we have APC reimbursement um, and it would group the data and sort the information based upon um, the client actual history and experience, uh, listing out the case volume, uh, the adjusted total charges. Uh, with total charges, you could include or exclude denials. Uh, that's why we list here adjusted total charges taking out uh, deny charges from the total charge. Um, the expected reimbursement, this would be your calculated amount, the effective discount rate, and then a percent of the benchmark. Uh, your first contract scenario uh, should be your benchmark. Many organizations will use um, Medicare as their benchmark. Uh, some groups, especially as they're looking at and incorporating uh, negotiating scenarios with smaller payers, uh, we're seeing a trend towards um, uh, incorporating a, a benchmark of Medicare um, and Blue Cross Blue Shield or Anthem, uh, so using either of those two as your baseline. So that as you then um, move to the uh, second scenario here, 
this would be either your proposed contract uh, that you've received them from the payer, um, or it could be your counter proposal. And we typically see and incorporate more of a um, column side-by-side -side approach where you're taking benchmark, current, and then proposed counter proposals uh, so that you have all the data lined up for an easy analysis of how that contract is performing. Obviously, when you're doing this type of side-by-side -side analysis, it's important to really understand where the financial winning and losing is occurring. That's why it's helpful to see the data at that service line level. Um, it's also important to note uh, that sometimes you can negotiate uh, different contract terms. Other times you may have to accept the new terms um, that are being proposed, depending on who the payer is. Uh, but regardless, you should be modeling to have a clear understanding of the financial impact of the new reimbursement scenarios before they actually take place or roll out um, to your organization. An example that we're seeing um, more frequently today is where state Medicaid plans are moving to new outpatient reimbursement methodologies. Um, the migration towards EAPGs uh, is one that we are seeing in a number of states, uh, Florida, Medicaid, Ohio, um, Alabama, Blue Cross are some examples of where we're seeing that migration towards new outpatient reimbursement methodology. And with Medicaid programs, uh, you may have little ability to negotiate new or different reimbursement contractual arrangements, um, but the modeling activity within that managed care or revenue integrity department should still be occurring uh, because that helps from a leadership standpoint uh, the organization to really understand and plan for that projected financial impact, uh, as Susan noted earlier. You have to have that original benchmark to understand where you're going so that as you're uh, moving forward, you can constantly see and adjust and make sure you're making the right decisions uh, for the organization. Uh, there are other cases where you do have the ability um, to negotiate and that modeling approach can incorporate new rates uh, as well as different reimbursement methodology changes to really ensure um, you're uh, providing your team or yourself with the knowledge of where changes should be negotiated. So at the end of the day, you end up with a true win-win contractual arrangement uh, with your payer. Um, that's where we find it, again, so important to uh, really look to move uh, beyond just using uh, traditional Excel uh, modeling tools uh, to really calculate all of the intrinsic uh, contractual terms and rate schedules um, in presenting the data in that side-by-side -side analysis approach. Susan? Thank you. You make some really good points. You know, never are you more attuned to the details than when you're modeling that contract for the negotiation, it's great to have that be your baseline that you can reference again and again over the course of that contract's life. <clears throat> again, excuse my voice, I think it's deeper still. We're gonna talk about some other benchmark methods. The one here, we're on page 15, is, is benchmarking against the current market rate. Um, two different views on that. Both you'd need to estimate, but they're extremely valuable. One is to actually look at what the payer in question reimburses your organization versus your competing providers. While those are proprietary contracts they hold with others, there are ways to buy intel on that information that gives you a feel for where those rate placements are, and there's certainly information in the market, um, but where you are compared to those. What does the payer say is their strategy for positioning your organization against their other valued providers in the network? That really matters to you and to them, and sometimes it's disregarded on the hospital or provider side because it seems like it's not our business, but it's all about this competitive positioning. Second is to actually look at that payer's reimbursement compared to how other payers reimburse you. Picture just a playing field. Do you want it entirely level? Do you want to reward certain payers for volume? What is your strategy for, for where those placements are? And if you don't know how they compare to each other, uh, then you, you wouldn't know how to move the given contract um, to, into its renewal. It's really important to benchmark that as well. 